guys welcome back today is wednesday which means weird bible words with amber and mariah and today's words are discomfort not to be confused with discomfort actually kind of something. kind of <laughs> dearth and damnation so if you guys haven't been with us for any of our weird bible words videos what we do is we just go through and we find some kind of strange kind of not well-known words from the bible and we dig deeper into them look up their definitions how they're used today how they're used in the bible and just try to figure out what they mean and what they mean when we read the bible so that we can better understand what we're reading so without further ado let's get into it so the first word today we are doing is discomfort, and she said not to be confused with discomfort. But actually, whenever we were looking into this, it is it kind of means the same thing as discomfort. I guess maybe when they first translated it from Hebrew or Greek or whatever, it was just a shorter word than what it is today. I don't know. It still means the same thing. So the regular definition of discomfort is make someone feel uneasy or embarrassed. And then the Bible definition is to put into a state of perplexity and embarrassment to frustrate the plans of. That really does kind of mean the same as discomfort. Yeah. To make someone feel uneasy or embarrassed. Yep. <laughs> Mom. Those things make me feel discomfort. <laughs> the first verse that we found to go with this word is Numbers 14, 45, and it says... Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites, which dwelt in that hill, and smote them, and discomfited them, even into Horma. So, mm. he made them uncomfortable. Yep. And then the second verse is Deuteronomy 7.23, and it says, But Jehovah thy God will deliver them up before thee, and will discomfit them with a great discomfiture, <laughs> until they will be destroyed. And that is ASV. Most of this word was either in the KJV translation or the ASV translation. In that verse, we have discomfort and discomfiture. Discomfiture. In the Bible, the word is translated as defeat, frustrate, discomfort, and thwart. Up next, dearth. <laughs> the dictionary definition is a scarcity or lack of something. And the Bible definition is scarcity that makes deer specifically famine and an adequate supply. The first scripture that we have for that one is Genesis 41 54 and it says and the seven years of dearth began to come according as Joseph had said and the dearth was in all the lands but in all the land of Egypt there was bread. It really means famine here or I think it does don't you? <laughs> yeah. The last scripture for dearth is Acts 7, 11, and it says, Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and Chanan, a great affliction, and our fathers found no sustenance. So, very severe famine. Yes. Honestly, I've never heard that one before. I haven't I've either. never heard the word dearth or, like we talked about last week, I had never, like, noticed it. I had probably just replaced it with a different word in my mind when I read it or something. But. Yeah. Okay, the last word for this week we're going to do is damnation. Dun, dun, dun. You stole my thing again. <laughs> <laughs> the regular definition of damnation is the state of being in hell as a punishment after death. I think that's what it means in the Bible, too. Mm. The explanation or definition for damnation in the Bible is desecrated or found guilty, disapproved, rejected, sentenced to a punishment, declared guilty, condemned, doomed, or convicted, judged, or censored. So it also is described as a sentence or condemnation to everlasting punishment in the future state or the state of eternal torments. I found this interesting. It says, this is from Quora.com, Q-U-O-R-A. It says, several Greek words that all mean what we could call judgment, which was often translated in the King James Version as damnation. But that word actually doesn't appear in most English biblical translations at all. That's because the King James is an older translation of the ancient language made when current English words didn't mean what they did in 1611 when it was made. This was also a time when we were more limited in our understanding of the true meaning of certain Hebrew and Greek words. So that's interesting. The first verse we found for damnation is Matthew 23, 14, and it says, 
Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocr hypocrites, <laughs> hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. This is Jesus speaking, and he didn't. Know, he apparently did not agree with the Pharisees and the scribes, and he's calling them out and saying that for their dishonorable ways, that they would receive the greater damnation. And then Mark 3, 28 and 29 say, Verily I say unto you, All sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewithsoever they shall blasphemy. But he that shall blasphemy against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. So once again, this is Jesus again speaking, and it's another warning for, uh, this one is for blasphemy. Okay, so that is all for this week's Weird Words. Be sure to come back next week if you enjoy these videos. Also, we post videos on Mondays and Fridays. Mondays are Bible studies, and Fridays we do fun videos. Other than that, we hope you guys have a good day, have a good week, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy our videos, and we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.